listening to the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast, a podcast in sisterhood for female entrepreneurs that serves up savvy, actionable marketing advice and interviews with creative business owners who are in the trenches building their businesses as we speak. The Marketing and Yoga Pants community is for you, the girl on her couch, in her yoga pants, top knot tight, hunched over her MacBook, trying her hardest to get the word out about her business. So in the name of supporting each other while supporting ourselves, bringing community, sound marketing advice, coffee, chocolate, and wine together for you, yoga pants wearing business owner, in a world where followers mean nothing but paying customers mean the world, Join us on this week's podcast episode and in our private Facebook group where you'll meet your soul sisters and build your business in yoga pants. Welcome back to another episode of the Marketing in Yoga Pants podcast. I'm Britt Colo, and I'm here today with a longtime friend of the podcast, Joanna Platt of joanna-platt.com. And we are here doing something totally different this week for you. I am not interviewing Joe. She's flipping the script or flipping the mic, however you want to say that. She's interviewing me. <laughs> uh, so you guys know Joe. She's been, uh, she's like I said, a friend of the podcast for a long time. She was one of my very first interviews that I did, and uh, back, oh man, right at the beginning of the podcast airing, and then I brought her back on for season two, and we we dove in deep on the topic of the inner critic, which is one of Joe's favorite topics to talk about. Kind of one of mine too, now that I understand what it is. Thanks to Joe. And Joe has been one of my longtime marketing coaching clients. And it's kind of weird to call her a client now because like she's legit just one of my friends. <laughs> so so it's, it, I always love hopping on the phone with her for coaching calls. And it's just, it feels really great to have her in my corner just always. And a couple weeks ago, she reached out and she was like, hey, I have an idea you want to be interviewed by me on your podcast? <laughs> and, and I said, yeah, like, Hey, why not? That could be cool. We'll see where it goes. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to hand the mic over to Joe, and she's going to take it away. You ready? I'm ready. I'm so excited for this. Let's Thank you this. for giving me this opportunity. Absolutely. So I just think that you are like a business genius. I tell you that all the time (laughs) and I, that many people listening agree. And so I'm just so excited. I mean, normally when we talk, it's about my business and what I'm doing. And I just can't wait to hear about what's going on in your business. Um, so what are you spending most of your time on in your business right now? Oh, that's a good question. I spend most of my time, and I think my time tracker could definitely <laughs> support this thought. I spend most of my time creating content and or strategizing so for my own business. So, and that might surprise people because you might think that I spend most of my time working on my clients' businesses. And I mean, I spend time coaching them, but that only takes up so much time of my week. The Everything else is how can I make my own business better? How can I pivot things so it works better? How can I improve it? And dabbling in other things too, keeping my doors open for, or I guess my eyes open to other opportunities that might be just around the corner. And as long as I have my head up, I'll notice it and I can go in that direction if I choose to. Yeah. So I, I've got my head down in content creation and strategizing and also trying intentionally to keep my, my hands, my eyes open to new stuff as well. Hmm. That's super interesting. So it sounds like you know, you often hear people um, saying that they spend time working in their business, but not on their business. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Is that what they normally say? Yeah, yeah, usually. Yeah, Whatever usually they people. say, it sounds like you're mm-hmm. doing the opposite. 
I do. Yeah, I do do the opposite. And I've done the opposite from the very beginning that you could call that selfish. You could totally call that selfish. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, or I smart as I like ex- to reframe, you can keep well, your inner critic out of this conversation, please. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why I love you. Yeah, you're right. So from the very beginning, and I think this is kind of why the marketing agency that I thought I wanted to build, like doing marketing for other companies never worked for me because my mind just never shuts off of how to improve my own stuff. I'm just constantly thinking about the next thing I want to write and the next podcast I want to do and the next topic I want to tackle. And so I intentionally allow for time in my week to be able to do those things. Now I know some coaches and I know other service-based business owners that they would rather not do that. Like, I don't think marketing marketing and content creation and strategizing, that doesn't have to be a majority of your week, but it definitely has to be a majority of my week to feel like I have the freedom and control over my business and schedule and feel like I'm making progress and doing the work that I'm supposed to do. That's a really cool question though. I'm really glad you asked that because I hadn't really thought about that in a super long time. Yeah. And I actually am really surprised by your answer. I mean, it's interesting because in some ways I'm, I'm surprised because I'm your client. And I think I know so many other people who are your clients that I just imagine you coaching a lot. Mm. But then when I take a step back and I think about all of the content that I see you producing, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's how she's able to, you know, get all of these things done. Like it just blows my mind the amount of things that you create and that you offer. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, uh, No, thanks. I I think I've definitely wrestled with that before thinking that I need to coach more and create less content. But at the end of the day, I, I think I'm a writer first and a coach second. And so I really find my deepest flow with writing and I can do that in this business that I've created for myself. And so I prioritize the writing. Now, if you're just a podcast listener and not, you haven't seen any of my writing, that might be like, wait, I thought you only did podcasting. No, I don't only do pod. I do love to talk and that's why I do podcasting, but (laughs) which is another form of content creation, but I do really love to write and I write over at Jam Marketing Group. And so that's where I put my best efforts every day. And then I coach. Yeah. I love that. That really resonates with me. I'm a writer first and I'm a coach second. Mm -hmm. Like I, that, that's me. Like, I think I'm a teacher first and a coach. Oh yeah. I I totally see that for you. And you know what? And I think if we can, at least in, in my position, I think, when I was able to prioritize it that way, and I was able to realize that I was a writer first and a coach second, which was last year as I was reading Tara Moore's Playing Big Book, which I've talked about on the podcast before. You sir, you obviously introduced it to me and I've read it, my gosh, at least twice all the way through. And I'm constantly grabbing it off my bookshelf and finding things I've underlined. I realized that I was a writer first through that book. And ever since then, I prioritize writing and it allows me to be such a better coach because as I can, I can, I can think through what my clients are going through and I'm taking their questions that I'm getting from the coaching calls and then I'm answering them in a blog post and it's allowing me to really flesh out the full expanse of the problem. And then I can go back to them with the blog post to just continue talking about it. And the next time a client comes up with that issue, I'm ready. Like I'm so ready because I know that I've fleshed it out through writing and that's how I process best. So yeah, that prioritization is, can be pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, like type of permission did you have to give yourself to do that? Because you know, so often we're told in business to focus all of your efforts on the things that make you money. Mm. 
you know, so which in your case would be like the deep dive sessions or one-on-one coaching, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I get this question, especially from, I want to say maybe a little bit more old school business people that don't really understand online marketing, content marketing, that sort of thing. I've gotten that from, you know, like just local people, just, you know, who have been in business for 10 or plus years. And like, how are you creating all this? Why are you creating all this content? Like you don't get paid for that, do you? And it always makes me laugh because no, I, I don't, but I guess I've, I've given myself permission to do it because I realized that a people are going to need to know, like, and trust me before they ever spend money with me. And for my business, being that it's coaching and it's marketing related, it's kind of nuanced. There aren't many marketing coaches out there. And if you're going to work with me, you have to at some level be like, okay, yeah, she's a cool chick. Like I, I can, I can see myself, you know, working with her for a few months. So knowing that I just know that the content has to come first. They have to read something for me from me, uh, or consume a little bit of my social media or see me on an Instagram story to even consider going to my website. And so do I get paid directly for creating content? No, but it's, I can't see my business working without it. I don't think anybody would pay me if I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's super interesting. I'm just like letting this like permission set in for me too, because I was driving home yesterday from like a juice place where I like spent three hours doing work and I'm working on a presentation that I'm going to give this week and I'm giving it for free. And I'm like, I'm like, I love this. It it is so exciting. And I just love thinking about like, how am I going to communicate this in the exact right way? Exactly what you're saying of like, this is how I process the problem and how I get more familiar with the problems of my clients is by like going in and diving deep on my own. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but I'm not making any money off of this. And, yeah. and hopefully I will get clients as a result of giving this talk, but I'm not getting paid for the talk itself. And I just thought that, anyway, this is just giving me so much permission to continue doing that. And I bet it will for some of the people listening as well. Yeah, that's, you know what, and it makes me think about, I guess, you know, I I love talking. I love these types of questions because they make me realize things that I just kind of take for granted in my own head. So I'm going to listen back to this for sure and take down probably 14 new ideas for content because you're going to bring up in this conversation things that I just kind of take for granted. And I just like automatically see. So guaranteed for me, I'm thinking marketing strategy all the time. And so I can in an instant think about how this one blog post could be found by just the right person, exactly who it's meant for. And that will let her feel like she's being seen and heard. And therefore she will schedule a call with me and then I'll be able to hop on the phone with her. And if it's the right fit, we'll be able to coach together. And that all goes through my head really quickly because I've worked on this stuff stuff so much. And then I have to remember, that's not necessarily how most people think. That's certainly not how I think my clients typically think not in the beginning, at least I might train you to think that way. Eventually you might like, you might really build that muscle as we work together, but it's not a natural thing to think about how one blog post can directly lead to money coming in. Um, So you just gave me a really good idea of how I can, how I can kind of break that down and remind people like, this is why if content creation is at all part of your strategy, which for most people it's going to need to be, this is why it matters. So thank you for that. That's good inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. I have one question later that I think will be very good. Okay, cool. For this same thing, which I can't wait to get to. But anyway, I have many more questions before that I get there. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so thinking about marketing strategy and you think about marketing strategy. Well, okay. Before we get into this question, I think there's probably some people who you spend so much of your time interviewing other people about their businesses. So can maybe we should back up and can you tell us 
what you do in your business and Mm -hmm. what your offerings are currently. Yeah, totally. So, and it's just recently gotten even more streamlined and more accessible. So I'm super pumped to talk about this. So I am a marketing coach. And tell us how long you've been in business. Oh, okay. Okay. So I started, I left my job at the end of August, 2016. So I've been at this for about a a year and a half full time. Before I left my job, I had no business to speak of. So it was really like a cold turkey. Let's just try this out. I've never done this before. Very unlike most people. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it worked, I guess. But uh, yeah. So yeah, I've been at this for about a year and a half. I started by doing marketing agency work. So I was like really just a freelancer. I would do all kinds of different online marketing tasks for people coming up with a strategy, but then implementing the strategy for them. And then I shifted about this time last year, thanks to you, Joe, to being a marketing coach. And then over the course of 2017, I was letting go of the the doing the marketing for people and leaning wholeheartedly into coaching. And now I'm only a coach. I don't do marketing for people. I strategize with them. I come up with a plan and I help them through that plan, but I don't do it for them. They do it for themselves, which is super cool. I love that role. It fits me so much better. So today, um, April, 2018, I approach marketing a little differently than I think a lot of people do right now in marketing. I approach it by attending to the entrepreneur, the business owner first. We figure out what the business owner, what really makes them tick, not the ideal client. We'll get to the ideal client, but we don't start with the ideal client. We start with the business owner, understanding her personality, what makes her tick, how she naturally shows up in the world. And with that information, we start to get a general feel for what her best marketing strategy is going to include. And then also based on all those factors, what her worst marketing strategy would include. So she can just stay away from those, you know, turn off all the blog posts and podcasts about those things, because that's just never going to be something that feels good to her. And she can lean into the things that will feel good to her. So we do that piece in my bite-sized offer called a deep dive session. If you've been listening to the podcast, you've heard about those before. So that's really the starting point where people start working with me is the deep dive. And then from there, you've figured out what's going to feel good for you. And now we need to bring in the elements of what you're actually offering. Because we haven't even talked about that yet. We're going to talk about your offerings and your ideal client. We're going to marry those three together. You, your offerings, and your ideal client to produce your most ideal marketing strategy. And we'll pull those pieces together in either a half-day intensive experience. It's like four hours together and we just bang it all out. And you walk away with a solid marketing strategy to go implement. Or... We work together for three months on a monthly or a biweekly coaching call schedule. So we work together to work through all of those. Instead of sitting down in one sitting and hammering it all out, we do it over time. So it's in more bite-sized pieces, kind of easier to to uh, chew on and deal with a little bit for some people. And then I then I hold you to your to your plan and I help you implement it kind of from afar and keep you accountable to doing it. So that's it. Deep dive session. And then once that's done, you can, we can either do a half day intensive or we can go into three months of coaching. Awesome. Okay. What's your favorite way to get the word out about your business currently? Oh, I love that question. I use your own words. My, (laughs) well, no wonder I love them. (laughs) (laughs) My my absolute favorite way is when a client has referred me to someone else. Like that, and that doesn't really have anything to do with with me asking them to do that. Yes, I do ask them to do that, obviously. Like that's just me being a smart business person, but is definitely my favorite when someone shows up on my calendar, shows up in, up in my e- inbox saying, hey, one of your clients sent me to you. She thinks that I could really, you could really help me. That just like that, that's everything. Like that means so much to me because that means that I'm doing a good job with that client. That's definitely my favorite. On a um, 
content creation side, obviously I love writing. I also really love Instagram stories. Like I am not too cool to say that. I love Instagram stories. Those are, they're fun to me. And I remember thinking that, I remember being super scared of them last year when they first came out. I'm like, no way. This is never going to, Instagram's going to get rid of this. It's just like Snapchat. This is going to suck. I can't do this. Like, and then I realized, oh wait, this is not going away. Everyone's doing it. I'm like, all right, I think I have to try to figure this out. And I was super scared. And then once I started, I was just, I love it. I love Instagram stories. They're just super fun. So I guess that's also my favorite to just kind of off the cuff do. (laughs) Yeah, I I was wondering if you were going to say that because you're so good. I mean, you do them a lot, very I mean, consistently, I should say, and you're very good at it. Thanks, they're fun. I've been getting into Instagram stories myself recently, and I agree. I think they're really fun. What I like about it is that it's very low pressure because it only lasts for 24 hours. So, like your perfectionist self, like there's just really isn't time to like hem and haw over it. You just do it and you put it up, and then it's over. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's really me too. And I think that's why it feels, I think that's why writing feels good for me because I'm not an overly picky writer too. Like I don't edit my stuff. Sorry to all of my copywriting and editor friends that are like, what? You don't edit? No, I write it and I publish it. If there's a typo, I'm sure you can figure out what I meant. If you can't, man, I really suck that day. Like I, (laughs) I don't know what else to say, (laughs) but so I love writing because it's it's very authentically me. And then I also love Instagram stories because, man, there's that is not contrived at all. That's just me riffing. And I, yeah, I don't really have to think about it too much. Everything else, I will say, it's not as easy. Like that's, it's, it's not as natural. And that's why, man, that's why I love talking about this kind of stuff because everyone has something that feels more natural to them. Because somebody is listening to this right now and you're like, what? Instagram stories are like the least natural thing ever. And that's okay. We're all different. Yeah. Also, I think you just blew a lot of people's minds when you say, I just write and I publish it. Like (laughs) so many like permission slips are just being handed out here. Like (laughs) money. It's just great. I love it. So what is your 16, what is your type on the 16 personalities assessment and how does that fit in with your favorite marketing strategies? Yes. All right. This is a good one. All right. So if you've been following for a while, you know that I really for a long time identified as an introvert. So I thought for sure that I was an INFJ and that in 16 personalities, the name for that is the advocate. And I will say like a year ago, that was totally 100% accurate. And then over the last year, I've really on a I guess probably on a more of a personal level than a business level, but also on the business level have really come into my own. I've, I've found a new level of confidence that I for sure have never known in my life. And that has allowed me to be more comfortable in an extroverted way. And so I recently took the 16 personalities assessment probably about a month ago and I got ENFJ which is super fascinating to me. I was, I was being 100% just so honest. I wasn't looking to get extroverted at all, at all. Cause I was like, no, I'm not an ENFJ. This is no way. But then it came up and I'm, and I started reading through and I'm like, yeah, okay, I get this. So I think that there's a blend going on there and that equates to a blend, a very unique marketing strategy. So for me, I know that INFJs are typically, well, for one thing, they hate high stakes sales situations Um, and like hard and fast selling. They would rather produce some form of long form content with a call to action at the very bottom, not at the top, at the very bottom, just to make sure that the person has been well indoctrinated into the the thing that they're talking about before they ever ask someone to do something. And that's totally me. I do that all the time. Hence the long, long blog posts and the podcast episodes with no call to action. <laughs> and I've just so recently been able to put a call to action in there because before it just didn't feel right. And so I do a lot of long form content. And then the ENFJ side, it 
ENFJs tend to be mesmerizing speakers. So they tend to really own a podcast mic and a stage. And they also tend to be really, really good mama bears, like really good leaders of the pack, but also protectors of the pack. And that's, I can see myself be becoming that more and more every day. So yes, I love speaking. I love being behind the mic and I can also see where my strategy could be even more improved if I could own the mic with the camera on, <laughs> do more video. And I would, you know, I'd love to stand on a stage and speak too. I've done it here and there. I used to do it in corporate. I loved speech class in college. It's like my favorite thing ever, but I've kind of gotten away from it. But you know, I know I'm getting there. I'll, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> so that's how it translates into my strategy right now. I love that. I love that so much, especially because I have the same personality type. So. Yeah. <laughs> that delights me. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning some things here. So that's cool. What would be your worst strategy? And this is what I love. Just, you know, going back to the like, I Instagram story, like there are people listening or probably like Instagram stories. Like, you know, I would rather like, you know, lick the bottom of my shoe than do an Instagram story. <laughs> All of this and like really what Brit like teaches and preaches is that it's not one marketing strategy fits all. It's you need to find the marketing strategy that fits you and your business. So when mm -hmm. Britt talks about what the best things for her are, and then when she talks about what the worst things for her are, this is just for her and her personality type. And I really want you to hear that you have the permission to lean into what is best and worst for you and your personality type and let go of the things that don't fit. Yes, preach, girl. So with Thank all of you. that said, <laughs> what would what are like the strategies that would just be like a, a bomb for you? Mm -hmm. My absolute worst marketing strategy would include high stakes sales. So having no indoctrination and just trying to sell something like right off the bat, that's not going to feel good for me. That's probably not going to work for me either because there's just more to be said. You know, and I, I think <laughs> my parents would totally laugh at that because there's, for me, there's always more to be said. I'm always talking. I'm always adding. I'm always continuing the conversation, which makes me a really good connector and a very chatty person <laughs> if I'm around the right people. So there's always more to be said. And so therefore I do not want a high stakes sales situation. And if you're wondering like, well, what do you even mean by that? Pitching on a webinar, that's a pretty high stakes sales situation. Not my favorite thing. Will I never do it? I can't say I never will do it, but it's probably not going to feel good. And I'm probably not going to lean into that very much. And I'm probably not going to expect that to turn a really high conversion rate because it's just not in my wheelhouse, right? Also really short launch periods, you know, like, and, and banking on, Banking on a huge launch of anything, that could feel really good for one of my clients and I'm all for it. But if it's one of my things that I'm launching, I am not going to put all my eggs in that basket. I'm going to work a couple revenue streams aside from that launch and know that I'm fully supported by the other things before I go headfirst into any kind of launch because it's just too high stakes for me. It's just too, too risky. So that's my worst. Yeah, that would not be good for me either mm -hmm. at all. And how freeing is this conversation? I mean, especially like in, I'm a coach as well. And, you know, it's really like, okay, get people on a discovery call and then talk to them, pitch your services, like help them, like help paint such a good picture for them of like what their future could be. And then tell them how you can help them get there. And then if they ask about the money, then say, well, what would the cost be if you don't solve this problem? Mm -hmm. And then pitch <laughs> them again. And it's just like, this is just, I just don't like this. This yeah. does not feel good for me. I don't like to be sold like this and I don't like to do it myself. So thank the Lord that there are other ways that we can do business. Yes, there are, there's there are always other ways and I I really like the word blend here because I'm also a hardcore learner as I know you are too. I think honestly, 
I think that's one really connecting thread between everyone I've ever worked with is they're, they're just simply a, a forever learner. And some, yeah, some of them identify as like a seeker, just constantly seeking that next bit of information, that next bit of intel so they can live more intentionally and do better. And that's just what they are tuned into. Me too. And so while I will stay open to, you know, how to be a better salesperson, how to be a better marketer, the latest and greatest and the tried and true stuff as well. I'm always down to learn it. At the end of the day though, I think sometimes that can get you so stuck by continuing to learn, learn, learn without being tethered to who you naturally are. So until you really know who you naturally are at your core, it's going to be really hard to decipher what is worth learning and executing and practicing. And then what is maybe just learning about and not taking too much time out of your day to force, right? Round peg, square hole kind of thing. Like, wait, I said that backwards. Square peg, round hole. There we go. I mean, it's the same thing. <laughs> same thing. Opposites, same they same idea. They don't go together. Right. Same idea. Um, <laughs> So it's, it's that knowing about yourself that that piece is so crucial. That's why I start with it. Yeah, I love that. I just think that it's it's music to our ears. Mm-hmm. There's just so many shoulds in business. Oh my goodness. Tell me about it. There's so many shoulds in freaking life. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know what? And I, I'll, I'll say this. I think the reason I have figured out how to give myself permission to do some of these things is because... I didn't know how to give myself permission earlier in life and worked myself right into a depressed hole, like right into just like, what in the world am I even doing here on earth? Like this is because I was just doing all the shoulds. Sometimes you have to be pushed there to realize, wait a second, I do have a choice and I can absolutely stand up for what I think is a better option. And I think I swung so far one way into doing all the shoulds and living up to all the expectations of my outer world that I swung so far back the other way and was like, I'm not listening to anybody's shoulds anymore. I'm doing my own thing. This corporate job, forget it. You know, like I'm just going to do it all myself and I'm going to do it my own way. And so, I mean, it was a blessing, I guess, to be pushed that far into the shoulds to realize, no, 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 this is not how I'm living my life. And I'm over here just saying, screw the shoulds. Like and all of that can just, no, no, that's not how I'm living my life. That's amazing. You blow me away <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so what are you most excited about in your business right now? Mm. Well, I think what I'm most excited about is that I feel more supported now than ever. I have been hiring for 2019. So what I mean by that is I've been I've been bringing people on and communicating with my small, very small team based on what I see for my business in 2019, not 2018, which can be super scary, which can make cash flow very difficult. Not going to lie about it. But I believe that if I have this vision for 2019, I need to start creating that reality now. And part of that was to make sure that I was supported by the, by my small team. So yeah, getting them ready uh, as if it's already 2019, handing things off that I could still do technically because I have the time to, but that I have to ask myself, do I do that in 2019 or do I not? If the answer is no, I don't, then I need to give that away right now. Again, very scary very scary shift, but I did it. And that's helping me feel super supported right now. So I can spread my wings and dive into these other projects. I've been doing a ton of experimenting this year already. Like Q1 was a huge experimentation because I thought I wanted to do this group coaching program. And right at the beginning of the year, I pulled all of that back. I pulled all of those plans back and I was like, wait a second. No, this is not what I should be doing. That was something that I saw other coaches doing and I thought, okay, yeah, that's the next step that is expected. I should have a group coaching program. And then I realized, no, 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 that doesn't, that does not align with me at all. It was just a big, huge should, which is funny because we just got done talking about that. So right before I I was set to launch it, I just pulled it back. Like I just 
I said, oh, well, I kind of just spent 90 days getting this thing ready, but I'm not going to do it. So Q1 was a huge experimentation, just trying to figure out what the heck, where am I taking this thing? How am I really supposed to be coaching this stuff? My one-on-ones work so well. I don't know why I thought group was really the way to go, but it, now I realize it's not. So what else is there? Um, and so the, I can't say the experimentation has been super exciting. That's just been really hard. I'm not going to lie because as you're experimenting, you're not usually bringing in a ton of money. You're not really like thriving. You're just trying to make the pieces fit. But I think I'm finally getting to the end of that and I've got the pieces fitting. And now it's just a matter of bringing clients into that and, and helping them be successful in that framework, which that's, I mean, that's exciting. That holds a ton of potential. So yeah, there's a lot. (laughs) And also like on the support end, I feel super supported by my team now. And I also feel super supported my mastermind group that I entered into through kick-ass masterminds. That was a leap, you know, cause it's, it's not a free mastermind. This is a paid thing. So it wasn't an expense that I was super comfortable with right away. But as soon as I jumped into this mastermind group, I was like, best money I've ever spent. Like this is exactly what I need. I feel so supported by those six women. I don't know what I would do without them. And also I've been working these, the clients that I have right now on my roster, if you're listening right now and you're one of my clients, you know that I'm talking about you right now. (laughs) They are my friends. Like you guys are my friends. I, I absolutely work with people that I can jive with and I can see myself like actually having just a cool afternoon with like grabbing coffees and you know, just talking about life and that feels really good. So I'm, I'm excited about that as well. Awesome. Would you be willing to give us a little glimpse into your vision for 2019? Mm, Sure. (laughs) So 2019. All right. Well, where do I even begin? So who's on your team now? Who's on your team now? Cause that was actually one of my questions. So I loved that you, I love that you like mention that. So who's on your team Maybe. now? So I, I can, have... I can gradually grow you to 2019. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like a big thing, right? I'm like a big picture thinker. So to like, just think about all the things it's hard. Um, so my team currently consists of a podcast producer. He is the bomb Dave at podcast engineers. Oh my gosh. Like I could not, I could not do this podcast without him. And, and I tell him that all the time. And thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Dude, you're awesome. And then I have a, well, a part-time virtual assistant. She, I had, I'm, I'm like stumbling over cause it's, it's recently changed. So I had a, a couple assistants helping me out, um, at the beginning of the year. And then as I was thinking through 2019, I realized, you know what I need I need like someone solid here. I had, I had three different people doing a bunch of different things and I really needed to consolidate and give them all like most of those things to one person. So that one person had the opportunity to really feel ownership in those things, those big chunks of tasks. And I'm looking forward to taking the entire month of October off this year for my wedding and my honeymoon. And I knew that I needed someone now to get into this role and and feel a bit of ownership here around these tasks that she's doing. So I have a backup while I'm gone. So I have a point of contact and I've, I've openly communicated that to her and saying like, this is my vision. I, I can see you forming into this and I, and we need to start that transition now. So, so we've just started that transition really this month, but she's a rock star. Like, I don't even know how I managed without her. So, so she's really my, my right hand girl. And I've got a couple of people in the wings that are mo- mostly like when I need them, I can call on them and we just have a really cool relationship that way. Um, but it's mostly podcast producer and strong, solid virtual assistant. What does your virtual assistant do for you? She manages all of my content. So it had always been my 
intention from day one of having a virtual assistant way back last year of like, I create the content. So I write it or I record it and then I just hand it off. I don't touch it again, but that never really happened for a super long time. I was, it was always coming back to me in some way, shape or form because there were just a lot of subtasks to be done under each blog post, under each podcast episode. It's just like a lot of work, you know? And so we were constantly ping-ponging back and forth these different tasks. And I finally, I just gave it all away. I write it and I give it to her. I record it. I give it to her. And I really don't touch it again until the blog post or the podcast episode goes live. And I just have to talk about it on Instagram. So that's really what she does. And she also has the future vision of, you know, being my right-hand girl, my main point of contact when I am gone for a month. And so I know she's in there, you know, just thinking critically about my business, which is so underrated. (laughs) I know she's watching, you know, I know she's constantly thinking, thinking about how we can improve this thing as well, which I don't know how to pay her for, but someday I'm going to figure out, (laughs) Um, but it's just kind of like an (laughs) unseen thing. Like she just has her finger on the pulse some days of the week. And that's huge. It, that's huge for me because it's not just all on mm-hmm. my brain sometimes, which is great. Yeah, I love that. What a dream. Mm-hmm. I bet there's something too that, you know, we could talk a whole nother time on about like with the 16 personalities in your marketing strategy, the types of people that you should have on your team. Oh, 100%. Based on I, what your personality type is. I bet you that I'm almost certain that there's something out there like that. I mean, a, a lot of these personality assessments like strengths finders and I don't I can't think of all the other ones, but a lot of them are very much built for corporate. And so, and how teams of people can come together and make really awesome stuff happen. I, I know my VA's personality and it's very different from mine. It's ooh, almost is very different from mine, which I think that's why it works. So <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's, I think that's why we're, we're making it happen. <laughs> so I have one, uh, maybe, well, I have one meaty question and two shorter questions. Go for it. This okay. is super fun. So I've been th- like, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I agree. Thanks for letting me do this. I, I'm just like, oh my God, I just get to hear everything I ever wanted to know about your business. This is so great. <laughs> so, well, is there anything more? I'm, I feel like I, I hear the listener in my ear, like, but what about the vision? What is Britt yeah. doing in 2019 that she's yeah. preparing for? Mm-hmm. So I made a shift in my mindset at the beginning of 2018 to really start thinking about this as less of a business and more of a, more as a company. And so I want this whole thing to be a lot bigger than me. And I will, I say that. And I also have to say this business might not be the business that I take to company level, as in it's not fully Mm -hmm. on my shoulders. There may be other ventures that I take on that are very different than marketing coaching that really turn into a company and something that doesn't run solely on my shoulders. Not everyone is called to that. And there's, it's not, it's never going to be a bad thing to have, to own a business that supports you and your family that rests solely on your shoulders, that there's no shame in that at all. I have a calling on my heart for something a little different. And it takes me over to this company idea that is not solely on me and that is sellable. I'm not necessarily going oh. to start something just so I can sell it, but I do have I do have it on my heart that I'm meant to build something bigger than me that could be positioned for sale. And not saying that I want to I would want to sell it, but like but just it being able to be sold means that it's been created outside of me. And that's really intriguing. I think Mm. that's, that feels like a really good challenge for me while I know that it doesn't for everyone, but for me and my heart, that does appeal to me that I think there's something in there. And that's why I've consciously kept my peripherals kind of open, just, you know, trying to learn, just trying to keep my heart open to what that might be and what that might look like. So does that come to fruition in 2019? I have no idea. I 
for 2019, it's really, the vision is to grow this thing. So I'm bringing in at least five figures a month. And because I know I can, it's not a numbers thing. It's a, it's more of like, I know that I, I totally can do that. Like, it's not that crazy to say that. And yet it's just a thing. I know I, I know I can get there. I just haven't yet consistently. Right. So I know that by 2019, I got to get there. That just has to happen for me. <laughs> and I'm just like super focused on that as long as I'm doing work that still matters. I'm not just making 10 figures or 10 figures. Oh my gosh, that'd be freaking crazy. Five figures a month to just because I'm doing it because it's work that I believe in. And this, this marketing that feels good work, that's stuff I can believe in. And I feel, I feel now that I dug into that really hardcore in Q1 and now I'm bringing it to fruition in Q2. I think that's the boat that's going to get me there for 2019. I just have to continue working it and steering it, giving it gas, you know, taking breaks when I need to. So that's, that's the, a little pea-sized snippet of the vision, but that's kind of the overview. (laughs) I love that. I love that. And I can definitely see that for you. And just like the same thing, I was going to say this earlier when you were talking about like being, you want to be on a stage. I can, I see that Mm -hmm. for you too. And I think that all of us here are going back to supporting you. Like, you know, we are holding space and holding that vision, holding a candle to that vision for you so that you can have that and make, make that be a thing. Thank you. And thank you for bringing us along for the ride and, and sharing at the onset, you know, and this is just, you know, in the gestation phase, it's a big deal to uh, be vulnerable and share your big dreams with people. So thank you for entrusting us with that. Well, thank you for allowing me to. It, that's such a missed missed opportunity sometimes to openly share about it because then that therein not only allows you to create space for your idea and your visions, but it also allows other people the opportunity to hold space for it and know that that's what you're working on. Because now that you know that that's what I'm working on, Joe, you can hold space for me. And when I work with you and I know where you're heading, I can hold that space for you. And we've seen that work back and forth for a long time, just between the two of us. And just like the magnitude of that, the expansiveness of that, when we start talking about sharing it, more openly to more people. That's just, that's massive. Like I can't even really wrap my mind around it. (laughs) Yeah. It's so big. So I guess I, I take away from that is if you're holding a vision for yourself right now and you're a little scared to share it, oh man, lean into that a little bit. Try to figure out how you can share it. Maybe even anonymous, anonymously, because it allows people to share it with us in the group. Yes. And well, yeah. And that, I mean, that can be scary for some people, but it doesn't have, it shouldn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be because we want to root you on too. We want to cheer you on. So yes. Thank you for that, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. And I just think that this is just such a good energy to close this conversation. Oh, okay. Um, Cool. So yeah. I mean, I think I do have one, one closing question, okay. which is if you could give us permission for something, what would it be? I got to think about this one. Cause this was, I didn't, I didn't know any of these questions were coming, but especially this one, I want to make it count. <laughs> <laughs> Don't overthink. No, no. I want to give you permission to connect to who you truly are, what you truly believe in. And that's it. I mean, you can bring that out into the world or you can keep it to yourself. That's fine. I want to give you permission to seek that out. Not externally. I want you to seek it internally. I think that that is so missed. I know it was so missed for me for so long. And when you're given permission to pull inward and not have to be on all the time, right? Going outward with your energy all the time and being everything everyone just expects of you. I give you permission to pull inward 
and connect to who you actually are, truly are. And it might take you some time to strip away all the other stuff that's going on in your head that other people have planted in there. But I give, I give you permission to do that. And whatever, wherever you take that is wherever you take that. That's fine. But pull inward and see what happens. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much for this conversation. This is truly, truly a gift for me and for all of us listening. So I just thank you on behalf of all of us for sharing your wisdom with us. Well, you're welcome. And thank you for giving me the space to do that. And this is such a treat. This is such a meaningful gift to me. So thank you. And listeners, you know the drill. We will certainly be in the private Facebook group. Joe and I have been in there, I think from day one, hanging out with you guys. So you can always pop over there to the private Facebook group. We'll start a thread. We'll start talking about this kind of stuff. And if you have any other questions for me, you can find me there and you can find Joe there too. She's pretty awesome. You definitely want to know her. So come hang out with us over there and we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Marketing in Yoga Pants podcast. Keep the conversation going by visiting marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook, where you'll get to join that private Facebook group I've been talking so much about. There, you'll get to chat with our podcast guests. Yeah, they're in there too. And all of the other brilliant creative business owners. We're connecting, we're meeting our soul sisters, and we're building our businesses all while in yoga pants. So come hang out with us. Again, visit marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook to get in. And one more thing. If you dig this podcast, would you be awesome and share it with someone? This entire Marketing in Yoga Pants movement is nothing without its community. So please share. And if you're really feeling the love right now, jump into iTunes. You're probably already there if you're listening to this right now. And leave us a rating and review. The more of those we rack up, the more the podcast will be found by ladies like you and the stronger this community becomes. This episode was edited and produced by the podcast engineers. They're pretty great. So go find them at podcastengineers.com. This episode was also brought to you by my online marketing agency, Jam Marketing Group. And you can find us at jammarketinggroup.co. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you back here next week on the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast. Love you. Bye.